Thanks. Good morning, everyone. A couple disclosures. Uh, some of the concepts in this talks are built into some softwares that you see there. So hip instability is the number one cause of revision total hip after infection. And you can see it's always flirting in this 18 to 20 percent of all the revisions that we do. So very important topic here. We're going to teach you how to revise these to hopefully avoid re-revision total hips. When you start thinking about all the revision hips that we do, and part of the reason for this course and part of the reason for all the other ICGR courses is that out of 380 revision total hips, 51 percent of these were completely avoidable, right? If you just did the first one properly, what's that mean is that Good preoperative planning, good surgical technique, everything we're teaching with the principles of this course. The reasons for revision are suboptimal positioning of the components, intraoperative fractures, which we just heard how to take care of, early aseptic loosening or undersizing, which could be done from good preoperative planning and good execution, and then symptomatic leg length discrepancies. Again, good planning, good execution. When you start drilling down into all those components, 50% of the ones that were avoidable are now suboptimal positioning of the components. Obviously, you're Monday morning quarterbacking, but I'm going to teach you how to Monday morning quarterback prior to having to do it on Monday. When you start thinking about why do hips dislocate, many different reasons. Is it the cup? Is it the femur? Is it abductor deficiencies, impingement, late poly wear, or maybe this unclear etiology? I think the hip spine relationship really covers three of these. Yes, the tabular positioning, femoral component we'll talk about in terms of combined antiversion, um, impingement in the unclear is probably hip spine that we just didn't recognize back in 2012. But really, when you're looking at these hips, if you're not getting a proper hip spine workup, you may be missing the picture. The re-revision rate for a total hip for recurrent dislocator is actually 15 to 20 percent. So if it's that high, we're not addressing the, uh, the problem. 100 cases here, 77 percent of the time, if you just got an AP pelvis x-ray, you missed the entire reason why the hip was dislocating. Right, that's a large percentage of these. That explains why 15 to 20 percent of your revisions for dislocations are dislocating again. When you start looking at the revision cohort, 75 percent of revision patients actually have risk factors in their hip spine. So things that I'm going to show you about pelvic tilt, different deformities, 75 percent of dislocation risk factors versus 18 percent of the controls. So very select cohort, and you may think that I think it's only about the hip spine, but it's not. It's about multiple different factors, but this is a large part of it. But what, what do you really care about? You want to know what's the target and can you actually hit that target? What kind of technology are you going to use? What kind of intraoperative landmarks are you going to use to hit those targets? And our targets are changing because we know historic targets, Linux safe zones, half of the Mayo dislocations were actually well within the safe zone. So clearly not safe for those particular patients. And the safe zones may be evolving. Another great paper I had to hear that the original safe zone target of Lewinick from 5 to 25 may need to be reevaluated. Maybe it's 18 to 38, like they showed, with the lowest hazard somewhere around 27 degrees of antiversion. Now, all the anterior approach surgeons in the room are thinking, there's no way in hell I'm putting a cup in 27. Well, this was approach agnostic. Regardless of your approach, 27 degrees of antiversion had the lowest hazard ratio for dislocation. So if you're looking at a hip x-ray and it's not in higher version, um, that may be reason why it's dislocating. What's the workup for this? Now, at our hospital, we've instituted a complete policy for the department. Every hip that's has had a dislocation goes under this workup. You get a standing and supine x-ray, and you get lateral x-rays and a CT scan, which I'm going to show you. And this is the reason you get a standing AP pelvis. If you just get a supine AP pelvis, you have no idea why this hip's dislocating. Maybe the offset's a little bit under-restored. Maybe it's because he's got a 32 millimeter head. When you get a standing pelvis, right, completely different cup position. It's no longer about a liner change, a bigger head, and increasing offset. Now it's a cup revision. You can get your hip spine x-rays, and I'll show you why these are important in a sec here, but a standing lateral, sitting lateral, very simple x-rays to get, and very simple lines that we're going to draw. And in a normal situation, when somebody sits down, if you think about your posterior dislocations, almost all of them are happening when somebody's sitting or bending forward. In a normal case, your pelvis is going to roll back. That cup is going to open up very nicely. And then a stiff situation, when you look at that red line, the sacrum is not moving from standing to sitting. What's happening here is that the cup is not opening up. Your cup, your pelvis, everything's now closer for when you lean forward, you're going to impinge and dislocate. This is why the hip spine is important. You're causing impingement. You're having earlier impingement, and you're going to have a dislocation. You can see here that this pelvis is a rolled back pelvis. You're going to go in internal rotation, flexion 90, internal rotation up to 70 degrees before you have impingement. And on this next video, this pelvis is now straight up and down a very stiff spine, just like you have a spine fusion. You're going to go 90 flexion, only internal to 45 degrees. 
So you're missing 25 degrees of range of motion to impingement. So of course this kip, you're gonna hit the trochanter on the pelvis. You can see this isn't really a cup positioning problem. This is a trochanter hitting the pelvis problem, which needs more offset. That's why in these stiff spine situations, you need a little bit more antiversion to protect yourself. Once you hit, your, once your trochanter is hitting your pelvis, you need some protection in the back to keep it from levering out. And then you need to use offset in order to get the troch further away from the pelvis in order to increase that range of motion until impingement. CT scan, I think, is actually very important for the workup of these recurrent dislocators. This is a case here where the cup is actually perfect, right? This is the rare case, actually. Out of those 111 uh, dislocators, about 90 of them were cup revisions. The rest were femur revisions. But this cup, 4027, right when the safe zone that Dr. Barry told us to do, but the stem is about 55 degrees of aniversion. So knowing that ahead of time will help you figure out why this hip's dislocating. Go ahead, revise the stem, normal version, increase the offset, go to a bigger head. And this is the worst case scenario. This is the ones that you can prevent preoperatively. If you see an outlet view on your AP pelvis, this group has the highest risk of dislocation, 8 to 15% of dislocators in the primary setting. If you get a standing lateral, you can see a large posterior pelvic tilt where the ASIS is behind the pubic symphysis. This is a similar case that I just showed you earlier. Looks pretty good on this, um, but she's dislocating within two weeks after surgery. Um, two days later, dislocating again, the residents keep calling you like Miss, Miss Jones is here again. What are we going to do with her? Um, you're looking at that and the cup looks pretty good. You start going through the protocol, you get the standing x-ray, you know immediately why she's dislocating. Her cup's not in the right position. And you may think I carefully selected this case because I just keep showing it over and over again. Um, but this is every single case of these. Um, they all have these posterior pelvic tilts. They all have more antiversion than you think it is when you get a standing AP pelvis x-ray. So I think it's crucially important. You get that standing lateral and you can see why. She's got a huge spine deformity, making you think that it's okay on supine, but it's nowhere near where she is functionally. This is the case of all these anterior dislocations. I think a lot of the anterior approach guys, you should be very worried about these patients in your practice. Try to prevent this preoperatively. So you got to revise this cut to a different position or you got to do a spinal deformity correction, but you're probably just going to revise or use a dual mobility like the Mayo guy showed us. Dual mobility, much lower risk of revision than a 40 millimeter heads. And you're going to be dislocation free now. We did this case six years ago and she was dislocating literally within two weeks of her primary surgery. Same thing here, this is now the primary situation. You've got a total hip, it looks absolutely straightforward, total hip. You know she's got history of spine surgery, but your supine AP pelvis looks perfectly normal. It doesn't look really like an outlet view, um, but you get a standing x-ray, definitely an outlet view. You get a standing lateral x-ray, a huge posterior pelvic tilt. Right, 20 degrees of posterior tilt is adding 15 degrees of your cup position. Same thing we saw in the last case. You put your cup in 25, that cup is now acting at 40 degrees because of the deformity. Right, this is what's happening. This patient's not standing normally. This patient is standing with their spine deformity. Their body is out there. Their pelvis is really tilted back. The cup's working at 40 degrees of antiversion unless you do something differently. And you can recognize this preoperatively, which is how you can prevent all those preventable dislocations. So in summary, think about this, right? 50% of the revisions that you're doing probably could have been prevented with good thoughtful surgical planning, good thoughtful execution of the plan. And then if you're not looking at the hip spine relationship, 77% of the time, you may think everything's okay, you'd be missing the boat. So understand why you're going in there for dislocations. Thank you.